Welcome to What Is Going On in the UC, and today we are going to talk about building the kingdom of heaven. Now, in the preceding episode, we talked about the fact that if Father had been accepted in 1945, we would have entered the perfection stage development of humankind. And we know that at the end of the perfection stage, we all would be in the direct dominion of God. And we know that the direct dominion means being governed by God's love. Just governed by love. Now, what's it like to be governed by love? Any unificationist worth their salt knows how intoxicating it is to be in the zone and be enjoying the loving energy that just comes from you, from God, through you, and just have one of those really good days. I've often felt that when I have those days, boy, it just doesn't get any better, and I feel perfect. I literally feel perfect. I don't know how you would characterize that feeling. I'm sure some of you have been in the same or similar vibe with God, and you know there's nothing more that you want than to just stay there and not trip, not mess up, not fall asleep, um, and not abandon that vibration, not abandon that, that awake mind, right? So if I fast forward, could you imagine? We're talking Kingdom of Heaven is a place where all adults are in the direct dominion. And children are easily being trained in that environment, that matrix. Even though they're in the indirect dominion, they're easily being trained to be in the direct dominion too. And when I say training, it's like the way television trains kids. It's like the way the radio trains kids. It's the original way that God made human beings. It does say in Romans 1.20 that God expects us to know him through the things that he made. So in like manner, just the things that we adults who are in the direct dominion, just the world that we make, makes it really easy for the kids to kind of get it. You know, and Father said that if Adam and Eve had succeeded, the path of their children into the direct dominion would have been much easier because Adam and Eve did not have a human model. But the children of Adam and Eve would have these perfected, always in that vibration, human model. So, you know, Cain, Abel, and, and Seth, and, and, and the girls, they would have had everything that Adam and Eve had. They would have had the, the archangels. They would have had Adam and Eve too, plus the creation that was in the garden, plus God. So it would be easier. But to really bring this whole concept of living in the kingdom down to where you live and where I live, where you really live and you really can understand, it's a really deep psychological issue. When we're referring to mind-body unity and mind-body disunity, your mind and body are never disunited, then you'd be dead, right? Or you'd be astroplaning, right? But your mind and body are always united. It's just that your body tends to dominate fear, fight, flight, tends to dominate your spiritual desires, and you're not able to be intoxicated listening to your spiritual mind, walking the walk that's so inspiring to your spiritual mind. And you're not able to do that because you're dominated by fear. And chief among the fears that we walk around in is that if we don't do something, well, we'll die. Even worse than that, if we don't do this or that, we won't be loved. We feel that maybe if we get a certain amount of love or a certain amount of pledge, a certain amount of fame, Maybe when I know that I'm loved to a certain degree, then I can let go and trust God. Being in the direct dominion of God is trusting this love act, this burgeoning love act that's trying to bubble up from inside of my imagination and come out as action. It's, it's like trusting that feeling like every time. And what do you think is the main determinant of whether or not I feel that I can let go and really trust my heart? And yes, you guessed it. It is the presence of true parental love. True parental love is the thing that ignites our true personality. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine, George, and he's saying, you know, this is the era of being the temple. You know, this is the era of attendance, not worship. This is the era of reporting and not praying. Reporting, attendance, and being the temple. What this really means is that we let go of all the incubation and we hatch. And we are the children of God. What in the world can make us feel like the children of God? One thing that makes us feel like the children of God is knowing that we are born from children of God. That's the first qualification that we are the children of God. When a person gives birth to a child, they go through tremendous pain. They go through tremendous effort. They go through tremendous investment to give birth to that child. And just the mere fact that we know that somebody went through that for us, it sort of communicates to us that there's a certain amount of commitment that they have in us already. And that's just first base. Just knowing that you are the child of good parents, just knowing that you are the child of children of God, well, that qualifies you to be younger son. But what qualifies you to be the elder son that your identity was growing into something called elder son. What qualifies you for that? And that is inheriting the dream of your parents. In other words, once you've inherited the dream of your parents, you can begin the path of elder sonship. Before then, you're just growing. You're a younger son. You're just growing. You know who you are, but you don't know how to be who you are until you know the dream of your parents. You are an extension of the dream of your parents. And when you really know what the dream of your parents are, and you're intoxicated by it, fascinated by it, and driven to act out your days towards that dream, that just turns you into the elder son. And that's what we mean by the perfection stage. Because from the time that you realize that you are the Lord, you are the one carrying the dream of God, you're the one who walks the path of trying to create the same thing that your parents were trying to create. It's called justification based on attendance, right? So, in closing, getting back to what George was saying about attendance, reporting, and being the temple. This is the time when 
we don't worship somebody who's different from us and above us. This is the time to realize that we are the being charged with and counted on to carry out kingdom building. So that means we don't worship anybody. We attend God. We don't pray to something apart or different from us. We report to God as junior partners in the same dream. We don't go to church to worship words or structures or idols that represent what we should be. We go to church or we step outside of our house. We wake from our bed being the temple. So in this perfection stage, what are our minimum responsibilities? Our little piece of that grand dream is something called tribal messiahship, which, you know, I like the way my friend George puts it. You don't go to heaven, you create your tribe. Because your tribe is that little slice of heaven that you actually create here on the earth. As he said, you barbecue here on earth together, you barbecue in the spirit world together. <laughs> All right, if you like this, then like, subscribe, and share. Talk to you later.